Our next guest is a former Chicago Sun-Times writer who's written his second book. It's about growing up Catholic in the 1960s on the Southwest Side. The book is Perish the Thought, an inspirational memoir of growing up Catholic in the 1960s. John Wayne, welcome to Chicago tonight. Good Thanks. to see you. Thanks, Phil. Appreciate and first of all, um, a quick description of what the book is about. Well, it's, it's about growing up in the 1960s, including uh, my days in grammar school, my days as an altar boy growing up in the neighborhood, uh, experience growing up in a, a family of uh, five kids at that time, and uh, just many of the anecdotes that went on there. But the, the overall story of it is really about a, a, a sincere boy growing up in a, in, with the Catholic faith. And then uh, when tragedy strikes, um, lost my faith, stepped away from the church for 10 years, and it took my wife and I having our first child for me to confront it and had to make the decision, how do, I wanna, how do we want to raise our child? And there was no choice. I wanted her to have the same experience I had growing up, so we went back to the Catholic Church, and it's been a, a wonderful, wonderful choice and a good decision. Although it's impossible to, for anyone's children to have the same experiences as their parents. Your book is full of your experiences. Right. Is there an anecdote of yours that really just kind of stands out and, and says to you, you know, this kind of sums it up? Well, um... I, there's there's so many different stories in the book. The one that's gotten probably the most attention is the one about my fifth grade teacher. Oh yes, this Ms. Pasco. Miss Pasco, yeah. In 1967-68, when the miniskirt was big, we're all sitting in class, and our teacher walks in, and we're kind of used to nuns with those big uh, outfits walking in, and here comes this beautiful blonde lady with a miniskirt on, and it really got our attention. So not too many of the boys were real eager to go answer <laughs> questions on the math board at that point, but um, she also um, was a, quite an influence for me because. Uh, she really encouraged me to be a writer. She gave out writing assignments. I did real well on them, and uh, she was quite a. Uh, she was probably the first person to give me encouragement, encouragement to be a writer. Your experiences with priests and nuns. Tell me about those. Well, you know, you hear a lot of different stories, especially these days, about uh, priests and nuns. Uh, in, in my parish, and I write about him, Father Griffin, who was the pastor, was a uh, terrific businessman. He built three churches at St. Bede's, bigger and bigger and bigger, to keep up with the population and that Saint was coming. St. Bede's the Venerable on Saint the Bede's southwest the side. St. Bede's the 83rd and Costner on the southwest side of Chicago. And, um, but he was, not a very, he was not a very nice man, and he was not what I would call a very good spiritual leader, and that was too bad. But um, There was an experience where you were expecting your end-of-the-year report card and tell me about eighth that grade mm -hmm. um, everybody got the report card and they were just you know delighted to be finally done with uh, eighth grade and move on to high school and uh, I didn't get my report card and the sister called me up at the end of class and said uh, uh, Father Griffin needs you to go over to the rectory and I walk over there I knock on the door they lead me to Father Griffin's office and there's my mother crying and my mother who had just been through her first cancer surgery uh, three four weeks prior to that is crying because they weren't able to afford to pay that last payment of thirty-five dollars mm -hmm. for my schooling, so they didn't give me my report card. So finally, Father Griffin gave in and uh, gave the report card with the promise that you know we would definitely pay that. So that's the kind of thing that I don't really think should be allowed. <laughs> and yet, you went on to have a, another priest who you say came in and was sort of like 1968. Just um, Father Richard came in and uh, just really excited all the kids because he introduced the guitar mass to St. Bede and uh, got everybody excited about it. Now, Father uh, Griffin was, uh, was not real positive about that initially, but he saw the impact that Father Richard had on it, and uh, he allowed him to have the guitar mass at 10 o'clock each Sunday morning. So he was, he was quite a great priest while we were there. Tragedy hit your family in fairly short order. Uh, tell me. Yeah, I mean, happened. you know, I mentioned my mother having cancer, and then uh, it came back on her. You know, you're supposed to go five years. That's the, that's the rule of thumb, right? But it came back on her just about the five-year mark, and I was in high school at that point, and um, I didn't know she was terminal. You know, we weren't told that. She was moved from Little Company Mary Hospital, Oak Forest Hospital, and I stood over her and just praying to God that she would live and just praying every night that I will be done knowing that God wouldn't let us down and well my mom did die and then a year later my dad died so um, my faith was shaken I stepped away from the church for a decade at that point so it was a it was a tough time for all five of us well the the children though your you and your siblings uh, the community came together in a really remarkable way. Isn't that amazing when a really bad thing happens like that? The Irish community came together through a big benefit at St. Bede, raised $50,000, which paid off those medical bills and paid off our house and really allowed myself and my sister uh, to continue. I mean, I got to go to college. I got to go to Chicago State University at that point. If that didn't happen, I would have had to uh, quit school, go to work to raise money uh, to keep us going. So many point. childhood stories that you have, John. Is there a day in your childhood that you would just love to relive? Well, 
you know, I think a lot of kids growing up in that time period, you know, what you remember is you remember um, hanging out with your, your friends in the neighborhood and playing that game Bouncer Fly, if you remember that game, when you throw the ball, rubber ball off the steps and, you know, you just play that for hours. You go play fast pitching up at the park or you just play for hours and hours. That's what people talk about our generation is in the summertime, you'd leave your house at 8 o'clock in the morning and go play baseball all day, come home maybe for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich at noon and back out the door and... I mean, it was a wonderful time, and that's really why I wrote the book. I wrote the book because it's so much different now. I mean, I've got four kids. It's really stressful, the challenges they have. They have so much more homework. Life is so different. This is a step back in time to kind of relive those days when life was simpler and a nicer time to live, I think. What do you say to people? Because your recollections of the church are so uh, overall positive and, 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 uh, and sort of engaging and warm. A lot of people, their experience was completely different. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I reaction to people who are bitter about the. Well, I, I mean, I take a, st a step back and I look at the big picture of my experience, and you know, I had a couple of priests there who weren't the nicest guys in the world. I had Father Griffin and then Father McInerney, who was the first alcoholic priest I ran into. But, um, and then you've got some of these priests who were abusive. And after I left St. Bede, that's when a couple of those priests had come into St. Bede. At that point, I'm telling you, I have, I have no patience for priests who come in and abuse kids. I hate anybody who abuses kids, especially a priest. And I think that they should be punished for that type of thing. So I'm with them 100%. I think the church should clean house of those types of people. John, the essential message of the book, how would you describe it? Well, it's an it's a inspirational story of, um, of growing up Catholic and what the faith can do for people. That, I mean, the faith is a good faith. And if people can, can look past some of the bad people that have influenced their lives poorly, I think they'll, they'll find the, uh, the essence of it. All right, John Rain, thanks so much for stopping by. And again, the name of the book is Perish the Thought, an inspirational memoir of growing up Catholic in the 1960s. And there's more Chicago Tonight still ahead, so stay with us.